So just a couple of words about uh, quantitation still. So now we are counting the reads per genes. Um, again, lots of tool, tools uh, for doing this. Uh, we are using HTSeq, which is again a very popular tool. Uh, and it counts reads per genes. Um, there are other tools uh, like Express, for example, which counts per transcripts. Also, Cufflinks counts per transcripts. Uh, Callisto and Salmon as well. Uh, and then there are also tools which count uh, per exons. But, but today we are counting uh, per genes. So, <clears throat> what you need to give to this tool is obviously your alignment file. And then uh, another file which has the locations of known genes. Now in Chipster you don't need to worry about this part because this is available on the server side already. And um, but you are of course welcome to use if if you prefer to use your own uh, GDF file uh, containing the locations, that's fine. Uh, Chipster allows you to do that. Uh, then it's important to realize that HTSeq, when it's counting, it's actually not going to count those reads which map to several places. Because it says, well, I'm, how can I know that it maps to this particular gene if it equally well maps to somewhere else? So I will just forget it altogether. Um, it has, uh, HTSeq has three modes. Uh, we will be looking at that in the next slide. And then I also want to point out that if your data was made with a stranded protocol, this is where you have to be super careful again in the parameters. You need to select the right counting mode. And um, again, so we have actually made a manual page uh, for this, and these are your options. And I, I also wanted to point out, so it, it, it's maybe a bit confusing because we talk about not unique and ambiguous. And what, what's the difference between this? Well, so the first situation up here is when a read uh, mapping place is ambiguous. And it's ambiguous because uh, the read, which is green here, uh, actually maps to a place in the genome which has two genes. So there is gene A, the purple one, and gene B, the blue one. And it perfectly overlaps to both of these genes. So hence, the situation is ambiguous. We cannot say from which one it comes from, unless the data was made with a stranded protocol. If these two genes are in the different DNA strands, uh, then we would be able to discriminate and count it for one of these genes. So this is the ambiguous situation. Then the other not unique situation means, means a case where a read maps to several places. So here we have the same read mapping to gene A, say on chromosome 1, and to gene B in chromosome 6. So this is multi-mapping read. It's not unique, and it's not going to be counted. For the counting modes, uh, there are three different modes, and the default is this union mode. Now, when it matters, usually for situations like this, it doesn't matter which, which mode you select. Uh, the strict mode is going to make a difference if you have situations where the read is sort of overhanging the gene, or if it's going across the intron, so the strict is not going to count it, the others are. Uh, and then it also matters in, in this kind of situation. So the default will say that this is an ambiguous situation down here because the read um, matches uh, the purple gene totally and partially the gene B, so it's not going to be counted the strict mode would count it for the purple gene. And then finally, you have this situation where, where everybody says that this is ambiguous, I'm not counting it. 
but remember if you have stranded data then you can count it so it's uh, when you are ordering sequencing data uh, if you have the option to get stranded data it's a very good idea and at least in Finland nowadays that's what they produce by default and you don't even have to pay any extra for it like it used to be so that it's more expensive but now it's the same price and uh, <clears throat> what else here yeah, I also wanted to I was talking about GTF files so uh, where the locations are if you want to give your own GTF file so this is just another file format really uh, which has nine obligatory fields so uh, you have chromosome then you have start and end position uh, which strand uh, this particular feature is and so forth and then you have the very last column where all this text is sitting so here you have tags and you can have as many tags as you want uh, containing different information um, and so in Chipster we have the GTF files already now if you want to use your own that's fine you just have to make sure that um, that you don't actually take your file from the UCSC because the format is slightly wrong. It's not going to work uh, with HTTP.